Hi there, thank you for joining me today. My name is Samantha and I'm going to be discussing the Balking Design Pattern for my CIS 476 Software Architecture and Design Patterns. So we're going to begin with an intro to the Balking Pattern, the intent, applicability, some pros and cons of the pattern, a UML diagram, and we're going to conclude with a code demo. So an introduction to the Balking Pattern. What is the Balking Design Pattern? This pattern describes an object that only executes an action when it is in a particular state. It's considered a concurrency design pattern, and those are design patterns that deal with multi-threading and programming. You're going to see some examples of threads in my code demo. Balking pattern is interesting because it's technically not a quote-unquote true design pattern. It's actually considered an anti-pattern. So I decided to take on balking patterns because while I enjoy design patterns, and I feel like I've gained a lot of knowledge from in-class practice, I think it's important to also recognize and learn about anti-patterns. Anti-patterns are certain patterns in software development that are considered bad programming practices. Trad traditional design patterns are common approaches to common problems and are considered good development practices. Anti-patterns are opposite and are considered undesirable. So for example, if an object reads zip files and a calling method invokes a get method on the object when the zip file is not open, the object would balk at the request. In the Java programming language, an illegal state exception might be thrown under these circumstances. An illegal state exception is used to indicate that a method has been invoked at an illegal or inappropriate time. The intent. Balking patterns are used to prevent an object from executing certain code if it, is, if it is in an incomplete or inappropriate state. Return the control immediately, with appropriate indication if an object is invoked when it is not in an appropriate state to execute the method. Balk literally means to stop at an obstacle and refuse to proceed to do something specified. Object that, objects that use this pattern are generally only in a state that is prone to balking temporarily, but for an unknown amount of time. It can either balk, throw an exception, or log an error. The applicability. Use the balking pattern when you want to invoke an action on an object only when it is in a particular state. Objects are generally only in a state that is prone to balking temporarily, but for an unknown amount of time. So right, we, so right here we have a general, simple example for an implementation of the balking pattern. Notice that the synchronize this line is used. If there are multiple calls on the job method, only one will continue while the other calls will return nothing. Another thing to note is the job completed method. The reason it's synchronized is because the only way to guarantee another thread will see a change to a field is to synchronize all access to it or declare it as vital. I've constructed a UML class diagram using Enterprise Architect to show the structure of my code. Fortunately, the class diagram is simple and it's easy to understand because the threads are not included. The threads will take place in the main class. When I show you my code, it'll be a lot more clear. So here's my code. I have a um, main class for the dessert demo. So what my code is doing is baking a dessert. I have different states for the dessert bake time, which shows in the different methods, oven off, oven on, baking, and done baking. I have a state variable to keep track of the dessert status. We're going to need a method to turn the oven on. And then we also have a bake item method to start baking the dessert. Here if the state is oven off, it will balk because the dessert cannot bake if the oven is turned off. So if the oven is on, the oven temperature will increase to 350 degrees and bake right over here. If we scroll down a little bit, the done baking method is to stop baking the dessert. In this method, if the dessert is currently baking, it'll balk because the dessert isn't done if it's still baking. Finally, we have an action complete method to update the state variable. And then if we go over here to our test file, I have two different threads for pass and for fail cases. In thread one, the dessert tries to bake without turning the oven on, so that should fail. Then there's a sleep and a second attempt that should pass. In thread two, you turn on the oven and then you start baking, so that should pass because the oven was turned on beforehand. 
Then there's a thread sleeve. Later, we try to have a finished baked dessert, and that should work. So let's run this. Okay, so for the first one, we attempt to fail this case in thread one, and it says error, cannot bake if the oven is turned off. We didn't say that the oven should turn on, so that actually makes sense. For this one, we attempt to pass case one in thread two. The oven is turned on and then baked, so the oven should start preheating and then baking a dessert at an oven temperature of 350. That looks good. Then for this case, we attempt to pass this case in thread one. I didn't turn the oven on, but, the ov but I do want it to bake, so the baking dessert at an oven temperature of 350 makes sense. Then for the final test case, we have an attempt to pass the case two in thread two. And then this one is if the De degree temperature was less than 350, it should turn the oven down to zero degrees, and that means that it's going to turn the oven off since it is zero degrees. Back to the presentation. Some pros and cons are pros, it, it is a simple pattern and it's easy to understand. Threads make it super organized, and the developer is in control of ensuring the correct state before invoking the action. It's also less runtime checking for trying to compensate or recover. So basically, if you're in the wrong state, then simply don't do it. Some cons are it is considered an anti-pattern, like I mentioned. It's time sensitive, and since the balking pattern is typically used when an object state could be prone to balking for an indefinite period of time, then it's not recommended to use when its object state is prone to balking for a relative known amount of time. I mentioned in the intent slide that objects can use this pattern, that objects that use this pattern are generally only in a state that is prone to balking temporarily, but for an unknown amount of time. Finally, I have some sources, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at slcative at umich.edu. Thank you for your time.